he ain't close. Like he may be in a math quiz or something like that, but this is football. <laughs> this guy is so disrespectful to the game that the, the coaches that have coached prior to this guy, look, has he ever done it? I'm going to go for it on fourth down. I'm the guy. I don't care what Bill Parcells did, Bill Walsh, Bill, Bill Belichick, and Bill, any anybody, of the Bills. Any of them. I don't care. I'm smarter than them. No, you're reckless. He's been reckless ever since he took the job. Now he's wow. reckless with his health. A guy that's had a broken neck, by the way, Mike Williams, had back issues all the time, and he gets hurt uh, in the last regular season game. Imagine that. But here's the deal. This guy, he, he doesn't – I don't think he respects the game because how do you not – like, he needs to grow from it. He needs to grow from not being – you know, I'm smarter than anybody else in the room. Do it. You know, there's a reason why those guys won all those rings. I'm sorry. I had to stop it there. I'm, I'm, I've I'm never heard that. It's, it's I didn't positive. hear it either. Holy crap. Wow. Dan, you know go ahead. The worst part? I used to like Rex Ryan a lot. I thought he was a very good head coach, but him as an ass analysis is just <laughs> unbelievable. What happened, seriously, to the renegade who said, I'm not here to kiss Bill Belichick's rings? What happened to the man who would cuss out players on HBO Hard Knocks and not give a damn about what anybody said? What happened to the man who would ignore the criticism of his attitude on the field and everything else? You know, disrespectful to the game? This guy's been coaching and climbing the ladder. You're telling me he's disrespectful to the game? I can't stand stooges like this who hate a different point of view of football. I personally, I've only had very limited problems with his uh, going forward on fourth down, and I can name them off for you right now. Last year against the Chiefs before halftime, I would have preferred he kicked the field goal. I only had a problem with the play call against the Raiders on his own 20. And the other thing is, my, obviously playing the starters week 18. I can't remember if there's another fourth down or not that I had a problem with, but, um, but that's about it. And I told you those three right there I had a problem with. And it's like, to say he's disrespectful of the game, to say he's reckless, I bet you this was one of the stooge who said at the beginning of last year, oh, my God, this is so fresh. He's a genius. Oh, my God, the ball's on this guy to go for it on fourth down and win these games. Because it's very easy. And this is what pisses me off the most, and I'll stand by it because I've said it before on this program. I'm a Brandon Staley guy, even though he's had to take his lumps recently. And I totally agree with that. I can still criticize the guy and – you know, question some of those actions, but I still believe he has the right vision. How, where does he get the audacity? It's very easy to criticize people when everything is going wrong. It's very easy. What he had no alternative in there except what, except what play conventional football. That's what he doesn't understand. That's what got the previous head coach fired from the Los Angeles chargers that he wasn't aggressive enough. He doesn't but that was his boy. But that was his boy say, too. That's, that a, that's, boy. that's his boy. But that's what I'm talking about. It's all bias. He has no idea what's going on anymore. He's trying to just stay relevant off of that HBO Hard Knocks profile. And honestly, I love the way Brandon Staley says, "I'm not here to not lose games. I'm here to do everything possible to win games." And if that rubs people, mind you, I'm low IQ. I don't understand the mathematics behind it. But if my freaking gut tells me to go for it, I'm not sending out a kicker out there, period. I don't care what the media or anybody else tells me. You know, that's a, that's my problem with it. It's not that he's reckless. It's that you don't understand the vision and you are just so beholden to the past that you don't want to innovate or do anything else. But you know what's crazy, I too? See. You know what's crazy, too, though? They're going based off of what he did last year. This year, he barely went for it on four down. Exactly. He really didn't yes. all exactly. that much. And last year, people forget, they wouldn't have been. Gilbert was there. They wouldn't have been 9-8 yes. and eight if they wouldn't have gone no. for it on no. numerous games. They might have been even worse than what they were. And, so and it's Real just, quick. It's uh, reckless what national TV guys are doing nowadays. They don't watch all the games, and they pretend that's to. True. That's my point. Brian Dable and Kevin O'Connell and the Vikings-Giants game went for it often on fourth down, and everybody yeah. was praising, this is some good football. They're going for it. And all of a sudden, we're all okay with it? I don't know. Yeah. No, yeah, and, but that's are. the thing. They don't watch the game. I think they just go on YouTube. They look at the highlights, and they're like, oh, okay, I know what my point's going to be. Or they look at what other people are saying. But I really don't think, and that's the problem with these national guys. They don't watch the games. They don't know what's going on. They just go based off of, oh, Brandon Sully went for it on fourth down uh, last year. Let me just keep on going with that narrative. And I think it's really lazy what national report or national media people are doing. I can't call them reporters. National media people are doing. They're just being lazy. Vic, my bad. Can I just 
uh, give my two cents here because um, I, I just wanted to say I was tweeting out most of that first half, and I was really impressed with with what Brandon Staley was doing on defense. He wasn't the reason that they lost that game. The reason they lost that game was, you know, uh, he got out coached late in the game. He lost Michael Davis, and it, it changed his whole de- philosophy on defense. But and then Joey Bosa had those two, you know, uh, bad. You know, it was an offsides, and then the penalties also cost him. But in terms of Rex Ryan, I'll, I'll say this: John Harbaugh was the guy that was going for it for two points. Nobody said anything, but yet you have this new era of coaches and they want to pick on these, on these new era of coaches as just because he was an offensive quarterback, you know, when he played and he, he's a defensive guy. Now they want to pick on guys like that. I just, I just don't understand. I don't understand what the hate is with the Gen Z coaches. I, 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 it's, it, as uh, Dan and Dago explained, Look, everybody does it their own way. It does just because you disagree with it, you don't have to bad mouth him. The, like if he, you know, did something to one of your family members, like he was the way that clip sounded like he had, you know, said something bad about his family or something. Yeah. St- Staley yeah. took Anthony and Lynn's job and their boys. So I, that's well, why. Yeah. Bias yeah, basically, he went out of his way to bury him, and that's yeah. the freaking problem we and, have and, with. And real quick. Dan, a good point because when Rex Ryan was a fucking coach, sorry, freaking coach, that's how fired I am. When he, when he was a freaking coach, he was the the bad mother effer with no respect for the game, doing it doing it his way, his vision. And you brought that yeah. point up, and all of a sudden now it's like you got to follow the rules, man. Pay your dues, respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, get, sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah we forget we forget what we were like when we had the making. Headset. He wants to talk about decision making. If he doesn't have a stooge quarterback for those AFC championships, he's winning Super Bowls. 